Art Bryles is out as Baylor football coach. I'm sports editor Mike Sherman from the Oklahoman, here with our Oklahoma State beat writer Kyle Fredrickson, and we're talking about the news that really shakes the Big 12 football conference this Thursday afternoon in Oklahoma City. Right down the street, Kyle, the Big 12 baseball uh, is having its tournament, and Bob Bowlesby, the conference uh, commissioner, was in town to talk about it. You've looked at the report. Why did Baylor take this action against Art Bryles today? Well, it basically confirms what a lot of these media organizations have been looking into over the past few months outside the lines, Texas Monthly, that Baylor has a culture problem as it relates to its football players and claims of sexual abuse and violence. Uh, This was a situation where we know about the cases with Sean Oaken, uh, Tevin Elliott, uh, Sam Ukwachu, uh, situations where Baylor players were accused and sometimes even convicted on sexual crimes, and the football program didn't do enough to report these things to the authorities. Basically, uh, Baylor coaches and staff members even went to the length of meeting with these uh, victims personally, uh, and instead of taking their stories to the police, reporting them to the administration as they're required to do by Title IX, they handled them internally and sometimes even pressured the victims to not say anything to kind of keep the machine rolling and to try to keep winning football games and kind of develop that culture of really the program over the person. And in doing that really had an effect on the entire campus, you know, creating an unsafe environment. So there's a lot of different layers to the situation, but in whole, uh, this was a situation where Art, Art Bryles knew what was going on and basically didn't do anything to stop it. And Art Bryles has been disciplined uh, more harshly than anyone else. He's fired. Uh, or suspended with the intent to fire him. Right. The uh, president of the university, Ken Starr, has, has lost his job, now going to be the chancellor, I believe. And Ian McCall, the athletic director, is being punished, sanctioned on probation. Is that right? Right. And as we move on, the NCAA is very likely to get involved at this point. In a conference call with some Baylor officials, they said they've already been contacted by the NCAA and they're willing to, to you know, do whatever they want to aid in their own investigation to what should be done here. But we're talking about maybe victories being taken away, a bull ban. I mean, it's hard to say exactly what it's going to be, but whoever's going to fill Bryle's shoes, it's going to be tough sledding as they try to figure out how to move on from what's got to be one of the worst, uh, you know, cases of uh, cover-up that we've seen in recent years and from such a high-profile program. Of course, we have the Penn State example. Right. And really, uh, in a lot of ways, one of the first times the NCAA moved out of the eligibility uh, world and to the misconduct world yeah. into, into sanctioning or disciplining a university or a member school that had, uh, you know, broken the law. Mm-hmm. Um, and, the, and the penalties against Penn State were stiff. Uh, Of course, uh, the the school fired Joe Paterno over the Jerry Sandusky uh, uh, child molestation. uh, But Penn State still suffering some of the consequences of that incident. So that's sort of the the precedent. Uh, The impact, however, this time it's about sexual assault. And and this is something that college campuses are dealing with across the country. We've seen Florida State uh, deal with this in a not so good way. Uh, Jameis Winston's... uh, season his career finished at, uh, at Florida State even despite some allegations that Florida State officials weren't very diligent about looking into that. Contrasting that of course Kyle was the University of Oklahoma and Frank Shannon which went all the way to the state Supreme Court for the right to suspend a linebacker over a Title IX uh, investigation uh, involving a sexual assault. So all this is uh, in, the, in the air and what we're dealing with is federal law. Right. And that's Title IX. One thing about that, explain that for us again, that's not just about scholarships for female athletes. Yeah, I mean, this is about the entire campus. This is if, you know, if you are a university and you receive a claim of sexual violence, it must be reported to the proper authorities in a certain way to make it public to the university and to the surrounding communities that's saying, hey, this was an accusation that was made on your campus. It allows people to be aware of, of potential predators on campus. And it's crazy to think that all this comes out. And from 2008 to 2011, Baylor, as an institution, didn't report a single case of sexual violence on their campus. And clearly, when we look at the timeline of some of these players' accusation and when some of this has taken place, 
a lot of those accusations that never made it to light were handled internally by the football program. I think that's why we're seeing Ken Starr being demoted from his job because while this is possibly isolated to the football program, it's certainly a campus-wide problem for Baylor. An important distinction to make too, though Baylor is a private school, it does receive federal funding and anytime you receive any kind of federal yeah. funding, you're responsible to follow the federal law, Title IX, broke allegations they broke the federal law which could have far-reaching uh, consequences again not just on the football program but on the university what's interesting about this of course I referenced that Bob Bowlesby was in town we have a clip of Bob Bowlesby talking about the news of Art Bryles uh, getting fired at Baylor let's take a look at that do you feel that this is the only thing that Baylor University should have done and could have done was to was to fire or browse. I don't have any vantage point on that because I don't have any uh, I don't have access to now all the information. And it would be presumptuous of me to to uh, make any sort of statement like that because I I haven't seen what the board saw and what the university leadership saw. So you don't believe that the conference should have a hand in obviously Baylor's investigation and what it hands down as far as punishment. Well, we should have a hand in anything that uh, that intersects uh, with with athletics, and to the extent that uh, that there were athletes involved in this, we're certainly interested in it. But um, to to say that, uh, and I don't think you could find anything in our bylaws that would say the conference has any uh, uh, regulatory um, province or or has any um, any particular imperative on this. Uh, you know, are, are we concerned about it? Yeah, we're concerned about it because uh, we're concerned for the welfare of students in general and, and particularly in this case students on the Baylor campus. But uh, beyond that, uh, we're here to manage athletics com com uh, contests and uh, that's as far as our involvement should go. Of course, Kyle, what else Bowlesby went on to talk about is Baylor's position in the conference as far as uh, advisory in a very important uh, role right now, and that's looking at conference expansion. Is that impacted by this? Well, Bowlesby would say, you know, just today, it's, it's such a quick, you know, knee-jerk reaction. Right now, he doesn't know whether or not this is going to affect Ken Starr's position as uh, an advisor on that expansion committee, him being one of three presidents. But you've got to think that when you're talking about making these kinds of huge decisions for the conference moving forward, you don't want a guy making a decision who's just been ousted because of a huge controversy like this. And that kind of brings us to this idea of expansion. What does this do to the Big 12 for its reputation, for the schools who are, might want to join? When one of your very top programs has this type of instability, it's just you wonder what the domino effect is going to be moving forward. That's a very interesting point, Kyle, that I hadn't thought about is do I want to join a conference with a high-profile program that would conduct itself oh, yeah. like this? Hadn't really considered that. Had also thought, though, that the idea of expansion right now and, and seems trivial in yeah. response to what's going on this and this is not a problem unique to Baylor it is a problem apparently unique in how Baylor handled it right uh, does it's possible of course that expansion gets shoved back to the, to the back burner of this 10 team conference still calling it the self the Big 12 still thinking about its own instability at a time when other conferences are sort of on the prowl it'll be interesting to see how this happens about Art Bryles though um, this is a guy who built something where there was nothing. Uh, we've had people on our staff going down there for years. Dave Morris, our, 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 our video director, talked about what it was like going to uh, Baylor when they were having, they were playing in what seemed like a big high school stadium down there, holding press conferences, post-game press conferences, for uh, in, a, in a, what seemed like a classroom. Oklahoma taking uh, its fans down there and running the joint. That's not the Baylor we've seen lately. OSU and OU have gone down there and played in against the Bears in a fearsome setting against a uh, program that was contending two times on the Big 12 championship. Uh, Baylor, what does this do to the football program? You wonder how it affects recruiting even in this class. Will those 2016 signees get a waiver to be able to opt out? And you mentioned it. The rise of this program was really on Bryles' back. That beautiful new stadium. I mean, millions of dollars all based on his offense, what he brought in there, that style of play. 
and you know, beyond that, just Bryles as a person, he was always kind of the folksy, you know, Texas high school football coach turned into this, you know, guy who, who's kind of leading a renaissance nationally and how offenses are run with tempo. Uh, can that continue? Who stays on the staff? Is, is Kendall Bryles, his younger son, going to be the offensive coordinator moving forward? How, I mean, how does his reputation change from this? You know, is in terms of which members of the staff were involved in curbing some of these allegations, that wasn't made available today. But as more of these reports come out and more of the details come out, you got to figure the staff has some fallout as well. And that's got to, you know, hurt them moving forward. This has been a program that's had a whole bunch of top 25 recruiting classes that's done so well recruiting in, in, in Central Texas and DFW and, and Houston area. You know, how is that all going to play out and, and moving forward when you have the Houstons of the world who are coming up, when TCU continues to bring in strong recruiting classes? You wonder how the climate of the Big 12 is going to continue to shake out from this point um, when the next few months, you know, there, we could see some mass departures from a program. You know, I think that a lot of people expected to win 10, you know, 9 or 10 games next season, uh, you know, in that top tier of the division. To put a finer point on this, uh, Kyle, I'll relate this story. There's a member of the NBA's national media, a guy who covers the league in town uh, this week for the Western Conference Finals, Golden State Warriors, Oklahoma City Thunder. Uh, I met him for the first time. Uh, he was talking to Barry Trammell, our columnist. He called, uh, your authority on the Big 12. My daughter is going to Baylor on a track scholarship. Tell me, do you think she's going to be safe? Think of that question for a second. This is somebody who's sending their daughter there. It's a, uh, it's a private school. It's been affiliated with uh, the Baptist, uh, the Southern Baptist Convention, the Baptist Church for decades. Um, and it's rise on the, on, the, on the Texas Plains. And all of a sudden, here's a father wondering if his daughter is going to be safe, an athlete, someone recruited by the school. You gotta believe that was, the act, that was what was behind the action that Baylor uh, leaders took today. They had to, and it, it brings up this broader question, I think, of control. All these college coaches, there's no national, I mean, there is a national organization, the NCAA, that tries to control everyone and make sure that everyone abides by the rules. But within these programs, you have these head coaches who, you know, I think they're control freaks. They want to do everything in their power to win. How far are you going to go to win? How far, you know, what are the steps that you're going to take to ensure those victories? We're seeing now that there's some programs out there that are willing to do some pretty, you know, unspeakable things to make that happen. You hope that this is a wake-up call nationally to say, hey, make sure you're keeping everything in perspective, that it doesn't matter how many games you win if you're endangering an entire campus. So uh, a lot to think about you know, for parents of incoming students and, and for just, you know, college football fans across the nation today. Thanks, Kyle. You can read more about what Bob Bowlesby had to say. Uh, from Ryan Aber, our reporter covering the Big 12 baseball tournament right now. And you can stay up with all the best coverage anywhere, every day at News OK and every morning in the Oklahoman.